So, um, I'm here today to do an unboxing of uh, a part of my uh, Carnivale Kickstarter from TT Combat. Um, today I'm going to be doing the, the unboxing for the Rashar Starter Gang. And um, I got his part as the Kickstarter. And um, this will be a start of the faction unboxing for this entire faction. And um, shall we just get on with it? So the box set comes, it's got a sleeve on it, and the back we can see the models that come in the set. And we've got the graphic on the front. This sleeve just pulls off. So if you would buy these retail, this is what I would expect to see. So we can see the sleeve there, nothing special, nice graphics. Then we've got a standard TT Combat box. Um, seems robust enough, it's fairly solid. It's come through intact, then it opens up. So inside we've got our models and we've got some bases. So let's take those out of the box. We'll put the box to one side and then we can have a look to see what we've got. So these are standard bases, they're beveled. They have an indentation in them which is fairly standard, the models. The slots have been filled in. So I'm guessing the models won't have slots in them. I'm not going to take those out of the bag because uh, we've all seen what bases look like. Most, the most important thing is the models themselves. Now, I have not seen these models yet. Um, I'm really excited with the content that TT Combat have put out, uh, especially with Beasts of War and, um, and the stuff that they've done themselves. And um, so let's see what the models that are in the baggies. So we've got three baggies, three poly bags uh, in the starter set. Um, some of them have multiple models in. So, first off, we've got the um, the sort of leader choice for the gang. So let's open this up. And we'll have a look at the model and some of the quality. So, we've got the uh, Magi Risha here. Um, I believe that's what it's called and you'll have to excuse my pronunciation. We've got a casting of the main body. Uh, it has some sprue on it there that's been used to fill the resin mould. I'm guessing it's been cast vertically in this direction. Um, it's quite nicely finished. There doesn't seem to be much indication of any mould lines I need to remove. Uh, there's just a little bit here and I'm quite happy with how clean that looks. Um, a second or two with a scalpel and I think I'd be done with that. Then we've got the arms. Now a little bit more flashing along here but something I can I can remove simply by using my nail. My nail is probably hard enough just to remove that soft bit of flashing on the edge of the model. Uh, it seems to have cast reasonably. There's no bubbles, um, no damage, uh, some slight warping but nothing a hairdryer just couldn't sort out. Um, I tend to use a hairdryer if I have a slight warp in the model. Apply a little heat. I find it's a you have a little more control that way than you do with a hot or boiling water, um, where you can target the air onto something specifically as opposed to um, dipping the entire model in. And I'm uh, I'm not overly worried about that. I've uh, cleaned up a lot of models from other companies, and I think that will go together quite nicely. And then we've got these other pieces. Again, a little bit of flashing on there. Nothing that you couldn't clean up in a few seconds with a scalpel. Um, and tell you what, I might do a, an assembly video another time showing you how I deal with all this so that you can understand uh, what we're going to do. Now, normally on resin models, resin models are made uh, in a silicon mould and the mould um, normally has a type of release agent in there. Now, some release agents can stay on the model, especially if they're used excessively, and um, that, that can cause paint not to stick. So I've always recommended that we wash the models uh, just in a detergent. I tend to use a, a washing up detergent, um, a toothbrush to give it a little bit of a scrub to make sure that you get into all the areas, and then let the model dry. I'll, I don't use a hairdryer for this, I, let it do, I, I plan the building and painting of my models around letting it air dry naturally um, and yeah that seems to give me a fairly good result, I've only had one model now in well, 15 years that's had that problem so 
let's put that guy aside and then we can pack him away later. So then we've got the two slaves. The two slave models come in the next baggie. These slaves are used in the game uh, as sort of power packs for your other models. So the Magi, which I've just moved to one side there, will use these uh, to access um, more spells or the ability to cast more spells during the game. And um, these guys have come through fairly intact. This model is a one piece model, just a uh, bit of cleaning up. No, uh, no difficult mold lens on this model. It seems really well put together, well cast. A little bit of a shine there on the model, maybe a bit of a release agent, but uh, nothing that we can't sort out. Oh, look, that's just snapped off there. Uh, so that's easy to clean up there, no problem. Uh, some small section sizes in here. Uh, is that, oh, that's a little bit of dirt, it's not a bubble. So, yeah, that looks a pretty good quality cast. Uh, looking forward to painting that one. Originally, uh, I was going to go with a different faction. Uh, however, uh, I think uh, I'm going to start off with this faction. Since I have all of them, because uh, I went with the Prince of Thieves, uh, um, Prince of Thieves pledge, which gave me all the all the gangs. Then um, it's hard to choose where to start. But um, this seems to be quite unpopular locally. A lot of people want the other gangs, so I thought if I take this gang and work with this gang then um, it'll just give people the opportunity to see what they like and play against them. So yeah, pretty clean, you know, clean, not bad, nothing I wouldn't have expected. For, um, you know, we've got the TT Combat logo and date on there, showing what the model is. And uh, I, I quite like that actually. It's like sort of a, a stamp of when you got your model and when the model was made. So let's get those pieces to one side. And uh, I believe we've got two of the more sort of extreme uh, models in here now. Something that's more indicative of the alien nature of this race. Um, I can't pronounce and remember the names. Let's see if they're on the actual, on here. Yeah, we've got them here. So we've got the Lesser Agdru, it's there. And we've got the uh, Agalop in here as well. Now the Agalope, which we'll start with here, is a, a very feminine creature. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's a lesser spellcaster in the game. So I'm not sure I'm gonna run a list with her in, but you can see she's a gonna be an interesting model to paint. Lots of uh, different surfaces to apply possibly directional um, directional uh, lighting on there. Um, I've not decided on a colour scheme yet. Maybe a blue or a green. Something that um, will make these guys stand out. A lot of uh, people have been painting this model in, in a light blue. And uh, I'm thinking I might go down that road as well. So again, a one piece build. So quite an easy model to put together. A little bit of cleaning up and a bit of super glue onto a base. And that will be finished. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And this is more of the tank in the um, starter set. So we've got the starter set there. We've got the uh, the main magic user there. The two batteries to keep him going. And the lesser magic user. And this is the main combat element of this starter set. Um, one of the things that you can do with this faction is you can use... Uh, these slaves to make this model regenerate. Um, the model uh, consumes the slaves, I uh, imagine, by eating them. So we've got like a, a little bit of a bubble there at the bottom of the cast. You'd expect that somewhere because of the direction it's been cast in. I don't know if you can see it there clearly on camera. Uh, the model's been cast on this side, so I'd expect a little bubble there. It's not actually poking through. But there is a slight skin on it. So, yeah, that's something I can quickly maybe even spray over and ignore. So that shouldn't be a problem. If not, uh, a little bit of uh, filler on there, and that would be great. We've got the arms here that seem to fit into the sockets really, really well. So that's a, a good uh, good start. Uh, not a lot of filling and finishing there. And, you know, the models are exactly the same as the other ones. A little bit of flashing on there, but nothing untoward. So... I think this should be a quick clean up, maybe an hour, hour and two, 
this entire uh, gang will be built and ready for washing. Um, most people wash their models before building them. I tend to wash after. Um, I don't think it's good practice to do it that way. It's just uh, the way I like to operate. Uh, um, it seems to work for me. Uh, it's not the most advised way of doing it. Um, you've got to be a bit more careful with your glues and fillers if you do so. Uh, but um, I just find it's nice, quick and easy to get them built and done. And then at least you're testing if the model's all um, rigidly glued or it's going to last in a tabletop environment. So that was the Rashar starter set or the starter gun and uh, you can get this already from TT Combat and it's available in good stores. I know we stock it in the uh, uh, in my local store, that's Homeforth Gaming Centre. So um, yeah, uh, that's it. So let's see how that goes and we'll uh, We'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.